welcome to the vlog y'all. Today is our seventh full day in Japan. We are waking up in Kyoto, but we're about to go to Osaka. So this vlog is not a perfectly polished trip to Osaka. We did a lot of activities and we saw quite a bit in Osaka, but this vlog is mainly about how I survived the heat exhaustion while having dysautonomia and being chronically ill in Osaka for an entire day. So that is definitely the overarching theme of this vlog, but we did see a lot of cool stuff and try a lot of cool food. Yeah, we should have just gone to the aquarium or stayed in the underground mall. Yeah, this was a really rough day. We have, are getting a later start today than we have any other day. I was so tired from yesterday that I slept in until 8.30. So I just kind of get ready for the day and it is nine o'clock now. So that's when we're heading out. And because I'm kind of tired and out of it still, Robert is gonna explain what we're doing. Well, I'm also a little tired and out of it because I was doing laundry at 3 a.m. At this point it's 3 a.m. and I'm in a convenience store in Kyoto because our hotel has insufficient laundry machines and the laundry machines they do have don't dry completely so I'm now waiting for the extra 30 minute extra dry cycle so this is probably gonna amount to something interesting where I'm gonna be asleep and Linnea is gonna have to fend for herself and explore the city tomorrow morning so that'll be interesting and hopefully she vlogs it Thanks for doing the laundry, babe. Today we're going to Osaka and we are going to start by going to Osaka Castle. And then from there, we're going to go down to Shinsekai and then walk over to Dotonbori, you know, before we ultimately come back to Kyoto for an earlier night and maybe go out to Fushimi and Ari in Kyoto later tonight. Well, anyways, we're heading to Osaka. This is not what I thought it was gonna be. This is good. It's like a giant cream puff. The heat sickness is still hitting me very hard. We should be out of the sun more today because even just walking from our hotel to the 7-Eleven to the train station has me feeling very just ill. So hopefully this electrolyte drink helps. Now we're waiting for the JR train to Osaka. It's going to be a really short train. It's just going to be about 29 minutes. And then we'll see the castle in Osaka. And Robert has assured me that some of the malls and stuff are underground and like fully air conditioned, which I definitely need. Like I'm struggling so much just in this station. Like I'm not doing okay with the heat or the walking today. It's already bad. As soon as we stepped out of the station, things went awry. The 90 degree Fahrenheit or 36 degree Celsius weather with 80% humidity immediately knocked Linnea out. Apparently we didn't even need to leave the station because the underground mall known as Ameda Whitey connects the JR system to the Osaka Metro. Linnea asked me to find her a smoothie, but Google Maps deteriorates around Ameda due to conflicts between service level stores and the underground mall. After getting lost in the labyrinth of above ground construction and underground tunnels for 30 minutes, I finally found a smoothie place in a department store that I took Linnea to. It's air conditioned and there's an overwhelming amount of food places and stores and I'm drinking a pineapple banana smoothie and trying to get myself to feel better before we go out in the heat. I ended up having two of those pineapple banana smoothies. Robert shared the second one with me and he said it was really delicious, which it was. The electrolytes from that and just the extra calories from that, the fact that it was a cold beverage really made me feel a lot better. Also just sitting in the AC made me feel a lot better. We are in this like underground network. We're in Omeda Whitey. What's that? Like that's what this is called? Mall. So yeah, we're in an underground mall, which is very, very cool a lot to look at and it's air conditioned which is really helping me between the smoothie and the, the smoothies and the AC I'm feeling way better so we decided to set off on our Osaka adventures and the first thing to do is get a subway to the castle and you think we can get to the subway underground yes it's there oh well then here we go I didn't put sunblock above your eyes yeah, well why did you touch your nose so we bought tickets not to go inside the castle what is this castle called just the Hosoka Castle. Stop saying your O's weird. I don't even know, okay? Well, I'm not gonna pronunciations. 
So we didn't get tickets to go up into the turrets to like see the view of the castle. We're just kind of looking at it from the outside. Being back in the heat again, I immediately feel terrible. We've been using our umbrellas as parasols and we put on sunscreen, but it's just the heat is really affecting me. I'm nauseous again being out in the heat. Like I wasn't nauseous when I first had the smoothie, but now that we're out in the heat, I'm nauseous again. Robert is dripping sweat. It's so hard for me to recognize what I need when I feel bad. Like sometimes I feel bad and I'm like, oh, I need water or I need food and like I feel better from that other times I think I need water or food and I feel worse like it's just or oh, I need AC it's like there's just so much to manage having dessert for breakfast was delicious but definitely wasn't what I needed in terms of like electrolytes it's really hard to do like a blended gastroparesis diet in like a healthful way without having access to like smoothies and blended soups or like really small portions of different things so I'm really glad we found those smoothies it's, I don't know how I'd be doing without it but yeah this is just basically survival getting through today and I think I'm reaching the point where this vacation is feeling a lot less fun for me because of just the level of exhaustion, the level of heat. It is so much hotter now than it was the first several days of vacation when we were in Tokyo because that typhoon was coming in. I'm not sure if it ever came in because it never rained that much, but like it was keeping the air cool. And now we just have like blazing sun. Robert has a bunch of things that he wants to see. I'm just kind of tagging along and trying not to pass out. That is literally what I'm doing. I'm just trying not to pass out and just follow Robert along as best as I can. But let me show you the castle. It is really pretty. We are resting in the shade and then we're going to stand up again. I hate standing up, but we're going to have to do it. So I'll show you the, sh the castle that from we can see here. And then I think at some point in this garden walk, we're going to get a better view of it. So there's like a moat all the way around the castle. And then it's kind of hard to see because of these trees, but if I can point the camera through the trees, that is the castle. And then it has this big moat. And there are boats and stuff that we've seen going on this moat. It doesn't look like the cleanest water, but hey. So yeah, that's the castle, it's really pretty. We don't have the zoom lens on, so I can't really zoom in on it, but that is the castle. Robert, you feel pretty bad too, and you don't even have dysautonomia or like my chronic illnesses. Yeah, I'm just enjoying the shade and the breeze for a sec before we backtrack to the train station. Wait, so now we're going back to the train station? The amount of public transport is starting to get exhausting. Like, are we, please tell me we're not doing any public transport the next couple of days. I'm just starting to feel like we're spending half this vacation on trains. Like it's starting to get really annoying to me. The alternative is to walk like a 5K in the heat between every destination. We were too ambitious with this vacation. It's starting to get hard. We're gonna make it, it's not a vacation, it's more of a journey. A journey to Japan. Yep, that's a really good looking castle. The one really nice thing about the weather here, even though it's awful, is that you get these kind of crazy blue anime skies with these incredible clouds. Pretty good looking castle. I'm glad we didn't go all the way to Himeji though. Okay, this is a way better view. I don't know why we didn't think about just getting away from the trees to see the top of it. Well, because I wanted to be in the shade with the breeze near the water for a couple secs. <laughs> I'm sorry I was mean to you at the castle. I was very hot and I always felt like it would never end and I was just really upset and I lost control of my emotions. I was very angry. Well, that's really not the first or nor the last time somebody will be angry there. It got burnt down, got bombed in World War II. Many people have been angry at Osaka Castle before you. Okay, so we have made it to Shinsekai. Robert said it means what? Uh, the new world or like a brave new world. And Basically, what it, they were trying to make the neighborhood of the future back in the 1930s. Back in the 1930s? Yeah. What are we here for? Just to wander. Yeah, we're just going to experience it. Oh, this is cute. This is nice. Lots of clothing stores. Like, it seems like it's mostly clothing stores, which is kind of cool. We've seen a lot of food, but it's like something different. A lot of clothes. I love these little spoons. These are so cute. There's also like a lot of Italian places in Japan. Way more Italian places than you would think. There's one almost everywhere. There appears to be like a whole vintage section, which is really cool. Movie books, vintage matches, vintage postcards. It's really neat. Much more eclectic than any of the markets that we've been to thus far. So do you, did you enjoy that? Are we gonna go to the tower? All right, let's walk the outside. Do I want ice cream first? Yeah. Only if you shared it with me. Yeah, sure, what flavor do you want? I don't know, we gotta look. We have seen ice cream everywhere that we've gone in Japan. Like, you can't seem to go anywhere in Japan without finding soft serve ice cream. This ice cream shop has more flavors, though, than any shop that we've seen. So perhaps we will get some ice cream here. I don't know how they always get the perfect swirls. They do. So what flavor did you get? Great. How is it? Very good. All right, I'm about to try it. 
It tastes so artificial. I don't know how you like this. It tastes like purple nos. This is yours. This is the best kind of grape, artificial. Robert loves that there's so much grape in Japan. He's been getting grape juices at a lot of the vending machines, and now he has grape up ice cream. It literally tastes like artificial grape candy. I can't even taste the dairy in it. I'm glad you're happy, babe. We've been to several markets in our time in Japan at this point, and I feel like this one is definitely the least crowded, the most chill. And honestly, there's a lot of really interesting stuff to see because there's all these eclectic little things like those vintage matchboxes and postcards that like you just don't see at other markets that are more just like this is just fish and just food like there's just more going on but it's it's so hard when there's so many people and I get really overwhelmed I've felt like at several of the other markets that like you can't stop moving like if you stop moving you'll be holding people up but here we can just like take it in look at everything go and just like it's just a totally different experience so I'm really happy we came over here and additionally everything is covered so even though there's not air conditioning you're also not in direct sunlight so that helps a lot anyway we're gonna keep heading down this street and then where are we going to Dotenbury starting to rally both of us are starting to rally I've been very keen on trying these bean desserts because we don't have them in America and I got an Azuki bean popsicle um it's strange it's just weird and I don't know maybe oh when you bite a bean this was not a good decision I regret this decision Denden town is considered to be the Akihabara of Osaka and it's on the way between Shinsekai and Dotenbury, so we're walking through it. Are we there now? Yes, we're in Denden Town, or the edge of it. We're walking under this covered walkway, which both of us really appreciates, and all around us are just really tall buildings. Kind of like Tokyo, but not as crowded and not quite as much going on. Definitely feels like a scaled down version of Tokyo. Yeah, this seems like super potato. Do you want to go in? Might as well. So in the U.S. they release Pokemon Red and Blue, but they never release Pokemon Green. Is that Pokemon Green? Yes. And also these came out before they came out in the U.S. They're still called Pocket Monster Trainer as opposed to Pokemon. Does this, this make is, you happy? This is like ancient. This might be even like pre-1990. Yeah. This is like Super Potato, except for there's not a million people here. You can actually walk and enjoy stuff and not be running into people constantly. I think this is some kind of collectible Kirby game that came in a wooden box. I love seeing you happy, babe. I think I'm good. You sure? Yeah. You seem so happy. Yeah. I mean, I just can't believe I saw a Pocket Monster. Monster green in like real life. It does seem like there is a lot in here. There's also older stuff. Like I saw Hunter Hunter, which we didn't see like anywhere in Akihabara. It seems like there's a greater breadth of things, whereas like in Akihabara it was like a couple of different animes and that was basically it. Robert is very happy. He loves stuff like this. So he's exploring. This is really goofy looking, babe. The panda? Yeah. Well, he's a panda made out of cursed energy. I like these a lot. This is the only anime that I know. So we are at one of the last shrines to survive World War II, and the Buddha here has been overgrown with leaves. It has been taken to mean a symbol of resiliency and rebirth. When I delve further into the history of the statue at Hosenji Temple, I realize that my prior comments lack nuance. The statue is of a Buddhist spirit named Fudomiyo. Fudomiyo takes a very different approach to Buddhism than other deities in the Buddhist pantheon, and it converts its anger into salvation. The statue carries a rope and a sword to subdue devils and demons, has a glaring face designed to frighten people into following Buddhist teachings, and is surrounded by flames of purification that burn away material desires. In short, it is typically a symbol of discipline and righteousness. In the aftermath of World War II, a destitute woman visited the remains of the shrine. Usually people left out cups of water at the statue. However, she didn't have one, so she splashed water onto the statue while making a wish. Locals claimed that the wish came true, leading more people to water the statue. Over time, it became overgrown with moss, hiding its angry visage. From then on, this once angry symbol of discipline became a tranquil symbol of compassion and hope for the people of Osaka. Yeah. Better not say anything about it being tubby. I won't. We're over by a whole bunch of markets now. Most of them have food and stuff like that. And the heat is really starting to get to me again. So I'm taking a little rest. We're going to this place that Robert says is called the Kitchen of Japan. And there's a new type of food there that he wants to try. And I'm gonna try to get some food as well to see if that helps me feel a little bit better since I'm feeling wacky again with this heat. Sometimes eating helps. This is starting to feel like Tokyo level busyness. It's very cool though. It is very cool. This is probably the biggest Don Quixote bargain store in Japan, and it even has its own Ferris wheel. So Lena and I are gonna have to go over there. Yeah, we definitely are. We went to one Don Quixote room when we were in Tokyo our first night, 
and that overwhelmed me in and of itself, but I'm just so curious if this one is like, so we definitely have to go. It's definitely is busier and not as good as the Tokyo one for sure. Also, the drink selection is pretty terrible at this one. At least in terms of refrigerated beverages. Robert had to get the cheese-filled bread, so that is what he is about to try down by the water. The water makes me like this place way more. It makes it feel like different enough from other things that we've done, and the food is pretty different from some of the stuff we saw other places. It has like Bayer vibes in a good way, like almost like a larger than life fair with like really good food that we don't have in America. That is what I feel like from it. Oh, look, a boat. Yeah, this is cool. I'm really rallying. I'm glad we came and saw this. This trip is really testing my ability to like power through things that I go through and like try to just like push myself to new places. All right, babe, are you gonna try it? It's like scaldingly hot from the outside. This is a close-up of the cheese bread. Robert said it's too hot for him to eat, so he has set it Shaped down like here. like a 10 yen coin, even though it's 500 yen. It was 500 yen? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. Wait, can I even get my change? I don't know if they gave you change. You put it in a thousand, but I don't think you got change. Oh dear. Don't eat it if it's too hot. I've heard these are disappointing, so I want to find out. How is it? Kind of bland, not worth probably three, seven dollars I've spent on this. Uh, it's full of cheese bread, so life is still better with it. I know you love cheese. It's sort of one of those gimmicky things. No, it may be worth it if it was actually 10 yen. I think if it was savory rather than sweet bread, it'd be better. It seems like the same bread they use for like making sweet desserts and stuff. Yeah, it is. While we were in Osaka, we obviously had to get takoyaki, the city's most famous dish. We did a live reaction, but the restaurant was too noisy to use the audio. If anything, it was the loudest restaurant we were in the entire time we were in Japan. Takoyaki are the Japanese equivalent of a hush puppy. They are fried dough balls filled with octopus, ginger, and green onion that are typically served in a sauce made of Worcestershire sauce and mayo and topped with bonito flakes. The balls are fried to such a high temperature that the convective air currents coming off of them bend the bonito flakes as if they are moving of their own volition. Like the okonomiyaki in our previous vlog on Hiroshima, the balls themselves were delicious, especially the octopus bites in them. But Linnea and I were taken aback by the sauce. To our very bland western palates, there's something really strange about the taste of fishy Worcestershire sauce. But by the end of the batch, I was really starting to enjoy them. As I record this right now, I'm debating going to the overpriced ramen place in Durham, North Carolina to get knockoff takoyaki, as I've developed a weird craving for them when I watch this footage. And that's very very surprising because it didn't seem like a meal that I would enjoy when I first had it. Next time I'm in Japan or even the next time I'm at that ramen place, I'm definitely going to have to get more takoyaki. So Robert's going to call it quits on the octopus balls. At this point, it's getting close to five. So we've been out of the hotel for a while, kind of ready to start getting back towards Kyoto. Um, but we're going to look for something in this complex that I would be able to eat and tolerate well before we head back to the station. But if we don't find anything, I guess I could always just have a third one of those mango pineapple smoothies because those were super good and sat really well. So if all else fails here in terms of finding me food, I'll just get a smoothie back at the station because that whole underground mall is right up on the station. We're on a mission now, find Linnea food here. It is the kitchen of Japan. There should be food for me here. More markets like surrounding that kind of main place we were at. Again, we're kind of having the experience where like there's infinite things to look at and seemingly like infinite places to eat. A lot of this stuff, like the ramen, we passed some ramen earlier. That's not ramen, we passed some earlier. A lot of this stuff smells really good and has Robert questioning if he should have gotten the uh, octopus balls because he's like, a lot of this stuff just smells so good and I got fried octopus balls. The 10 yen coin things are a scam. Babe, you knew they would be, but you still wanted no, no, to try them. I just wanted to verify for everybody. We didn't find any place for me to eat. There was a lot of ice cream and like sugary drinks, but me eating a ton of ice cream and sugary stuff is not going to be the best in terms of how I'm going to feel. So we're trying to find something that's more like nutritious, but it may just be that I have to eat something when we get back to Kyoto. The excitement of that kind of rallied me a little bit, honestly. And we were able to slip into that restaurant with the octopus balls that had AC for quite a while, which definitely helped. The train? No, but it's on the train line. The underground tunnel system's really throwing Google Maps off. So we are going to head back to Kyoto now. So we are underground again in the extensive underground tunnel system of Osaka and lots of like cool little boutiques and luxury places, luxury like shops and stuff. We're trying to find a bus or a train? Subway. A subway that will get us to the train to get back to Kyoto. This is a lot nicer than being on the surface. It's cool to just like walk around and look at everything and also to not be high. 
So we found this store called Jupiter and they have root beer, well, which Robert's be the only root beer in Japan. Robert's been looking for root beer this entire time. And all these other special beverages you might like. They also have coconut water, banana, banana milk. Banana milk. I have to get that. Papaya milk, mango milk. Oh my gosh. This store is called Jupiter and it seems like they just have like a lot of specialty items. So this is so cool. A whole extensive wine section and then all of these like interesting pre-packaged goods. They have Thai tea. They have French cheese. There's just so much to find in these big cities. Like just so much to find. It's crazy to me. We're back. It is around seven. We've been at the hotel for a few minutes. I'm really not feeling well. I'm very dehydrated. I did buy that papaya drink. I don't know why it's called papaya milk because I don't think it's blended papaya because there's no fiber in it. So I think it's just juice. So I bought this, I haven't had it. I got some coconut water, I drank a little bit of it. I got this chocolate bar that I'm probably not gonna eat now. I'm really burning out on like sugary foods. And unfortunately when traveling with gastroparesis, a lot of what a person can eat is desserty foods sugary foods. That's why I get so excited when we find a smoothie place that like blends real fruit. Maybe they add a little bit of milk, that's fine. I can do dairy in like moderate quantities. But like once we kind of get away from smoothies, all I really have that I'm gonna tolerate well is like desserts, puddings, ice cream, juice, fruit juice. Things that I don't really eat that much at home. Like I'll eat them here and there at home, but a lot of what I eat at home is like smoothies, nut butter, blend vegetable soups so like really high nutrition low sugar things just the fact that i'm mostly like living off of sugar and refined carbs which is definitely a way to get through a trip when you have gastroparesis it's not good for dislike nutrition and it's not good for my intestines so one of the reasons that i push myself at home a lot with eating things that like are more on the edge of gastroparesis friendly like eating a lot of nut butter eating a lot of fruit in my my smoothies as opposed to like maybe one or two fruits I'll kind of push it and add higher fiber things or add greens or things and the reason for that is because all those things are really good for my intestines and having this really refined dessert heavy fruit juice heavy pudding heavy diet is completely screwing up my intestines so it makes me feel like when we, when we get back from the trip instead of just like relaxing and sleeping I'm gonna have to do like a me relax clear out which those are never a good time it just feels like there's gonna be consequences from this trip. I'm starting to have a lot of pain in my like lower stomach. I'm very bloated and descended. I'm not gonna show it on here, but like my stomach is very descended and it's probably gonna stay that way for the rest of the trip. Yeah, I'm just really kind of hitting a breaking point, realizing kind of the weight of spending two full weeks away from home with several chronic illnesses and being away from a lot of the things that I do to manage my symptoms. And because we're on the go so much, much like it kind of puts me in this adrenaline heavy state and that's not good for my motility it's just a lot is screwing up my motility a lot is screwing up how I feel and I'm happy to be on this trip I hesitate to share these things I don't want to sound ungrateful like I am very grateful but there is a toll of traveling with chronic illness that is just a lot higher than the toll traveling as someone that doesn't have a bunch of chronic illnesses as y'all know if you follow my channel like I have spent months and months and months and months figuring out what works for me in terms of routine to manage my symptoms, in terms of diet to manage my symptoms, in terms of stress manage management to manage my symptoms. And then we're here, you know, in a different country and everything kind of has to go out the window to enjoy this properly. And it's getting to the point where my, like at the beginning of the trip, when I was fresh, my enjoyment was way higher than any symptoms I was having. But now that I'm getting really backed up and constipated and heat exhausted and sore, my symptoms are starting to outweigh enjoyment, which is a bummer because we're in Kyoto and the next couple days are supposed to be full days in Kyoto like no day trips just like full days in Kyoto and that was like a lot of what I've been most looking forward to on this trip is like coming up and I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to enjoy it that I'll have to spend like a lot of the next couple days in the hotel room I probably should have spent today in the hotel room recovering but I didn't I went on the day trip and like yeah it was fun but like I'm not sure if it was worth exhausting myself again before these days in Kyoto
out. And I've been really irritable and I feel bad because I'm just like not in a good mood and like I just feel bad about that for Robert's sake as well and it's just frustrating. So yeah, I'm gonna rest as much as I can tonight. I'm not sure what I'm gonna eat for dinner. I really don't want to just eat a bunch of sugar. Like this is fruit juice, but it's a bunch of sugar. Like I don't really eat fruit juice in my regular life. I eat like blended fruit and that's like really different. And then um, like this chocolate is mostly just sugar. I'm not sure if I'm gonna eat this. Like I'm gonna just try this to find something to eat, but I don't think I'm gonna put it in this vlog. I just need to get the camera away from me and just try to decompress and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video. I'm sorry for the sad ending, but honestly, I've been feeling rough all day and yeah, I've just, it's getting to the point where I am just wondering, I just don't know. I just need to stop this video and just try to recover. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Hopefully I feel some time better tomorrow.